First of all, I'd like to thank the City University of New York School of Professional Studies having me up from Austin, Texas. I'd also like to thank Chris for emailing me and uh, letting me know what to expect so I could feel prepared. And last but not least, I'd like to thank my family members who decided to come and watch my presentation. I'd like to first start off with reading a quote. Uh, I didn't put it in my slideshow because I read this on the airplane here. Um, this is uh, my body politic. Sunny uh, Linden, Linden. <laughs> that would be reading out loud. Um, so this is a quote. I am a disabled woman. I would say, and then might explain to my students, that means that I identify as a member of a minority group, disabled people, and that is a strong influence on my cultural makeup, who I am, and the way that I think. My name is Amber Telfer. On the screen is an image of me in front of Mount Marcy. And that was the first Adirondack peak that I solo hiked. I finished all 46 of the Adirondack peaks this summer, making me a third generation 46er. I was born in Johnson City, New York on December 2nd, 1989. In 1991, my family moved to Austin, Texas, where we settled in West Austin, known as the Hill Country. I went to Lake Travis Independent School District for 13 years, and I graduated in 2008. My dad would come home from work and we would sit down and we would read together. And he noticed something very important. He noticed that I was reciting the book instead of reading it to him. Whenever he realized this, he decided I needed to take my daughter to get evaluated. He did so in 1996 with Dr. Karnick, who is a child neurologist consultant. He is now in 35, his 35th year of practicing this in Austin, Texas. When I was evaluated, I was diagnosed with ADD, dyslexia, and dysgraphia. With this diagnosis, it was determined that it was best for me to be put into special ed. I was in special ed for reading and writing, but it was not in special ed for science and social studies. This meant that I had to get up and leave the general education class to go to special ed. At that point, I was not very strong in my identity as a disabled individual, and it was very difficult when my peers would ask, where are you going? Why do you get to leave? One of my friends noticed that I would get to the special ed classroom kind of upset. So he waited outside the classroom for me. His name was Art Pettigrew, and forever I will be grateful for the guy that waited outside the class just to go down the hall with me, because that was all I needed, was just someone to be there for me. And that was when I realized, that was when I should have first realized how important it is to have your support from your peer groups. So in fifth grade, I was, uh, you know, my parents had the annual review meeting about what was going to happen for me the next year, and they wanted to integrate me into general education classes. But there was a catch there. I had to pass the standardized test for Texas in order to be integrated back into general education. That year, I worked my tail off, and I made the most improvement in reading in the special ed department. They taught me the standardized tests during PE classes, and or during my recess time, and whenever I should have been learning Spanish with the rest of my peers. Later in life, I will learn that physical education is best for your hippocampus, and that learning a foreign language actually helps you learn your language better. So, I passed the Texas Assessment of Knowledge and Skills, putting me in general education classes in middle school. This is a picture of my friend Arthur Pettiker and I. We are back behind Lakeway Elementary School. We're at a carnival, and uh, Art is enjoying a snow cone that he won with a little hacky, hacky sack toss game. And um, I'm wearing my class shirt, because I'm a dork. <laughs> and uh, this is in 1999. We were in third grade. Um, unfortunately, Art passed away with muscular dystrophy on January 8th, 2010. This is a picture of me accepting my Student of the Month award from Mr. Garza, who was my middle school, or my elementary school principal, and he was also my soccer coach. Uh, this is Hannah Matthews to the left of him, and this is actually Mr. Little, who was my middle school and high school principal. The image on the right is a picture of me very proudly standing in front of the sign that was announced in front of Lake Travis Elementary School. And I'd like to point out that there are very beautiful blue bonnets and Indian paintbrushes at the bottom of that photo, which is a Texas thing. So in middle school, general education classes, 
I was a part of what was called inclusion, which meant I was in general education classes. The teachers would come in and modify my work for me. Had a very great teacher, could not find her name in the yearbook and I can't remember it, but she suggested that I be reevaluated for dyslexia so that I could be part of a reading program uh, at the middle school. I was reevaluated, which got me my label back again, because whenever they evaluated me in public school, they weren't allowed to put that label back on. I don't know, I should have done research on that one. Um, so, I was a part of a program called Reading to the Blind and Dyslexic, which is now known as Learning Ally. This brought to my attention just how disabling dyslexia can be for reading. I was grouped with um, people who can't see, but Reading to the Blind and Dyslexic was an incredible program for me. Unfortunately, it put a damper on my dad's favorite pastime to do with me, which was sit and read. And it made him understand where I was at and how my reading was progressing. But reading out loud and getting those words wrong and watching his reaction was very difficult for me. And it made me realize that I was letting him down. And so being able to sit by myself in my room and listen to audiobooks was huge for me, but detrimental to him. But it made it so that I could get through a book and not have to rely on somebody else to help me read. So in middle school, I started sitting in on my annual review dismissal meetings with Mr. Little, and I started recognizing what all goes into making sure that kids get their um, accommodations in, in school and classes and, and what ends up being best for them. I was asked questions like, do you want to go to college? Do you know what you want to do? And of course, I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a nurse, and I wanted to go to Ithaca College. The joke was on me. Ithaca College doesn't have a nursing program. <laughs> so I uh, went on to high school. I did some pretty incredible things in high school. I'm an honorary thespian in the Thespian Society, which means I did 150 hours in the theater during the four years in high school. I also did four years of the Texas swing band called the Lake Travis Fiddlers. And I challenged the system. What? This is just the beginning of a bunch of it. I wanted to take an advanced science class, knowing that I wanted to go in nursing, and when the school offered anatomy and physiology, I thought, well, this would be a great way to get me ready for it. Well, my, accommod or my academic counselor told me that there is nobody who can accommodate the work in there, so you can't take it, because you're special ed. I thought about it. I had all my science measures. I was taking extra theater classes just because, so why don't I take the science class and if I fail it, I fail it, whatever. Well, she said, do you, and that's what I did. When I got there, Mr. Stanilan was extremely accommodative. He had teacher's notes prepared for me, he modified the tests, and he facilitated the conversation between me and my lab partners, having them help me with the open-ended questions, which was really all I really needed was help with the open-ended questions. So, having done all that, I was prepared to apply for colleges. I took the SATs, I got accommodations, extended time dictionary, and a calculator. I did not get the best score on the SAT, but I still applied for colleges. I applied to Ithaca College, and I wasn't accepted. I applied to Incarnate Ward, which is a Catholic college in San Antonio, Texas, where I was given an achievement scholarship. I was automatically accepted into Austin Community College because I was graduating from Lake Travis, and I applied to Temple Junior College, which had a great nursing program and was about an hour and a half away from my parents, which was perfect because I needed out of there. So now before I segue on to higher education, I'd like to insert a quote by Ed Roberts because he says it better than I can. For a disabled person growing up, says Roberts, to have parents willing to fight for you and include you in that fight is the most important skill you can learn to be successful. And it is without a doubt what I learned from my parents and what my teachers instilled upon me in public school, which is you are a great advocate and you have to keep doing it to get through this. It definitely did and here we go. I went to Temple Junior College in Temple, Texas where I studied an associate's degree in nursing. I took prerequisite courses um, for the degree and I also took enrichment classes. I took a writing and reading enrichment class because of my scores on my SATs. While I was at Temple, I bumped into a really strong-headed man from New York City. His name was Dr. Burnside and he refused me my spelling accommodation on the open-ended tests on labs. I, passive-aggressively, studied those words he wanted me to spell correctly in the lab across the hall from his office. 
The third test, whenever he saw all the time I was putting into rewriting those words to spell them correctly, he said, you know what, I'm giving you the accommodation. Spell them to the best of your ability, and if I can't make out what part of the body you're trying to identify, we'll go through it, and you can verbally tell me what it was. Thank you, that was all my doctor recommended. So I also went on and I took a speech class where my speech teacher made me study healthcare reform, and that was when Amber decided she did not want to be a nurse no more. I got really lucky that I went to a chiropractor of mine, got a massage, went to go get adjusted, but the massage therapist had gone to a massage school in Ithaca, New York. Here was my opportunity to get to Ithaca, New York, which is something I really wanted to do because my family members have a hunting camp about 15 minutes away from Ithaca College, and my grandparents and other family members are about 50 minutes away from Ithaca. So I applied to Finger Lake School of Massage. I'll make shift this dream to come true. And that's what happened. Boo-hoo, didn't get into the nursing program. Whatever, didn't want to anyway. I had gotten into Finger Lake School of Massage, and I was going to become a medical massage therapist and work for that chiropractor who told me about this grand idea of being a medical massage therapist. So I attended Finger Lake School of Massage, which was an amazing program. They taught you visually, auditorily, and kinesthetically. When I got there, I was like, I'm sure you guys are going to be really inclusive, but here's my accommodation request. They said, oh, don't worry about it. People don't typically need accommodations. You'll be fine. Well, at the end of the program, we went to go and apply for taking the uh, licensing exam, which, by the way, New York State has the hardest massage licensing exam. Um, and the school said, we're not going to sign off on extended time because we don't have evidence that you ever used extended time on the test. And I wanted to fight it, decided not to, because one, Texas has the easiest massage licensing exam. Um, and I already had a job lined up in Texas. So I'll just take the New York exam, and if I don't pass it, you guys don't get me as somebody working to uh, stimulate the economy. Not my problem. I passed the licensing exam by two points, and I never have to take that exam again. Uh, so I also passed the Texas licensing exam, just side note here, to, could have taken that out of nursing school and passed it. It was very, very easy. I worked at the Lakeway Spine Center for a year and a half. I was also doing music on the side with a little gig that I had called Bamber Project at a burger stand on Fridays. And uh, I noticed this like reoccurring theme on my massage table. I had parents who had kids with learning disabilities and they were talking to me about going to the first ARD, about do I want to integrate my kid into general classes? And I would give my honest opinion. And the next thing I knew, I had parents coming to me for massages, not just to get massaged, but to also, you talk to so-and-so about their kid. I had run from disability services because I despised everything that happened in public school. But this was my opportunity to make all that pain not be in vain. And I decided to go back to school to finish my undergraduate degree. I started attending classes at Austin Community College so that I could show my parents I was serious and not going to drop out like I did in nursing school. <laughs> and. Um, yeah, I applied to Ithaca College and I applied to Wells College. Ithaca College gave me a scholarship called the Flora Brown Award. Flora Brown was the first musical student to graduate from Ithaca. And this, this award is given to people who don't intend to get a degree in music, but have contributed to music culture. Wells College also accepted me. I was given a transfer scholarship to Wells. It was very, very difficult to pick which school to go to. I had been informed of Wells College through a friend at uh, Finger Lake School of Massage. I knew that it was a very difficult college to go through. You had to write a thesis to graduate. Most of their classes were paper oriented. I thought Ithaca was the better idea. So I went to Ithaca College, and in the beginning, it was great. I got a single dorm for accommodations for ADD. I got 10 credit hours considered full-time. They had a testing center. They helped me with translating PDF to audio. It seemed really great until I had a couple of college professors tease me for wearing a beanie early in the morning when it was 40 degrees outside. You must be from Texas. 
Too bad I was born in Johnson City, New York, but yeah, I must be from Texas. And I also got an email one day that stated that I owed the college money. My scholarship had been taken away because I had an accommodation for 10 credit hours. I went to the accommodation counselor and I said, what happened? What happened? And she said, well, you know, if you ever get to 12 credit hours, we'll give you your scholarship back. I said, no, who do I talk to about this? This is called discrimination. And they gave me the person's name. I went to his office. His secretary told me to get a lawyer. I went to the uh, administration building. I filed a leave of absence. I packed up my dorm, moved it into my family hunting camp. Sorry, dudes. And I made an appointment to go to Wells College to speak with them to see if they're gonna pull the same thing on me. My parents weren't too happy with me. This was the second time I ducked out of education. But I don't like people telling me no when I know it's rightfully mine. I got to Wells, where I was meted, or met by Nicole Pellegrino, who was a friend of Dusty, who was in this photo with me, whenever they both attended Wells College. She was my academic advisor, and she had me meet Megan, who became my accommodation counselor at Wells. Megan immediately said, I would love to tell you all of this isn't going to happen here, but let me take you to the president of the college and have him tell you yourself himself. So we went over to Mr. DeWitt's, uh, President DeWitt's office, and I told him everything that happened at Ithaca College. And he said, Amber, my son is dyslexic. It has also taken him a very long time to get through undergraduate. And I promise you that what happened at Ithaca College will not happen here. You don't talk to Nicole about it. You don't talk to Megan about it. You come right to me. And I'm going to deal with the problem. Because at Wells College, everybody has a seat at the table. Yeah. So this is a picture of Dusty and I from over the summer when we were at Wells College celebrating its 150th year of being open. I attended Wells starting in January of 2014. I did, I had an incredible peer, Dusty, who came onto campus, read to me, helped me with outlines for papers, and really gathered my ideas and my opinions about my write, about my readings so that I could write it. When I first got to Wells, I studied industrialization because I'm a nerd and really interested in industrialization. And uh, Professor Cynthia Kep, Dr. Kep, helped me with my writing. She did a tremendous job. She sat down and went over every sentence of every paper that I turned into her my first semester at Wells. I then uh, decided to you know, declare psychology. I did research on my peers and their knowledge of their right for accommodation under the advisement of Professor Gagnon. She then took me to present my research at the Western Pennsylvania Undergraduate Psychology Conference. I also got to write a thesis under the advisement of Professor Morphy. Morphy. My thesis was labeled, A Guide for Parents of Children with Learning Disabilities. Who would have figured that one? <sighs> the best part of this whole story, and Cooney, you guys are going to love this, Kara um, Libweski. <laughs> came and spoke at Wells College, and she's the person that's responsible for me being a grad student through Cooney right now. She changed my life because I sat in the back of that auditorium crying, knowing that somebody else knew what it was like to be in the situations that I had been in with Ithaca College, and I went on to uh, do what I'm doing now. So I had applied to the City University of New York. I was accepted. I started the program. And as I wrote my discussion board answers, I just decided I did not want to speak from just my experience. I wanted to go out and I wanted to be on the other side. Let me be the teacher. Let me see how this is really going today. Not 2004 or 2008. I want to see what 2016 and 2017 looks like. Oh, guys. <laughs> so I was reevaluated so that I could get accommodations through, under, or through graduate school. And my reevaluation, I was able to be looked at as an adult finally. Something that did not change was my working memory is horrid. <laughs> I have to write down everything. I have a planner that is, you know, just totally dyed with ink because of how much I have to write things down. Um, it's very difficult in relationships to remember certain conversations. 
Um, and now I can really see time after time the evaluations have shown that. The biggest part is that I could compare my dyslexia to the general population. This is the kicker, guys. If you don't work in disability services and if you don't work in education, you will probably never meet anyone as dyslexic as me. I fall in the top 10 percentile of severity in dyslexia in the United States of America. I also was finally diagnosed with anxiety. <laughs> That's why I feel that way. So the teaching thing, ah, the teaching thing. I worked as a special ed TA at a middle school. I had originally been offered a job at my old high school, but they told me that I could not work as an 18 plus aide because I didn't have experience working with children. I had experience researching the group of individuals I was gonna work with, but I was denied the job because of that. So I went to their rival because that's how I am. And I applied for a job and I got it. And it was great, but after about a year and a half, I was like, okay, no thank you. And I left that job. Luckily, I found a job to replace it, but I also reapplied to CUNY. I was accepted and I started taking classes again in January of this year. So my conclusion is it is extremely important to self-advocate. You have got to stand up for what you need and demand it because it is reasonable, especially if you've been evaluated and somebody has agreed with you that that's what you need. Early evaluation. I am so very grateful that my dad put one and one together and took me to get evaluated. My support group is also very important, my peers and my family. On the screen, I have my evidence. Oh, I've been evaluated 10 times and I'm up for reevaluation this year. It is really traumatizing to know that everyone is here and you're still right here, regardless of everything that I've achieved. So 2000, or 1996, 1999, 2000, 2002, 2004, 2005, 2007, and then we start in 2008 where it then became my turn to be evaluated and pick the person that was going to evaluate me. You can see that these are all the different things they've done to evaluate me, and these are all the um, you know, suggestions that were made for accommodations. My connection to the pop-up museum. I have used a lot of assistive technology. I have done reading to the blind and dyslexic, now known as learning ally, which helps because even today when I'm reading through a sentence, I get one word wrong and I can't make out what that whole sentence is supposed to be. I take PDFs and I make them into audio using my laptop or else the Kurzweil 3000. I use voice to text with my iPhone or Dragon Naturally Speaking. I also ask Siri, hey, how do I spell grocery store? And she spells it out for you, letter for letter, it's incredible. Back in my day, wow, uh, back when I was a kid, I used to carry around a Franklin Speller. I wish that, I should have brought my old Franklin for that room, I used to call him Frank. Um, and I was recently introduced to Grammarly, which is incredible and super helpful. I'm so grateful for technology. So self-advocating, do it. Attend those meetings. I think it should start earlier than middle school, but it, you know, it really depends on the individual and their ability to understand what the disability is. Request accommodations. I started doing that for myself as soon as I got to college. I knew exactly how to do it. And almost, it was just intuition. As soon as they said, there's the Office of Disability Services, I was like, there's my service office here at you. <laughs> so I also um, defended myself. You know, whenever somebody said, you can't have this accommodation for spelling, I said, okay, I'll show you why I need that accommodation for spelling. I'm just gonna sit right here and write all these words down. Um, speak up when I need a fidget. Oh my goodness. So this has been a really big one. Um, I have a piece of plate glass that I like to rub on and my, one of my students taught me how to make a fidget out of a paper clip. You just bend it and then you can click it and it's incredible, it's really great. Um, another thing is anytime that I have requested an accommodation, I have always disclosed. And this is something that I really believe strongly in. I identify as learning disabled. I am a disabled woman, and I'm gonna own that title for the rest of my life because I don't see this label going anywhere. I keep getting evaluated and it keeps coming back as you have ADD and dyslexia and anxiety. So what now? Oh my goodness, guys, we're at the end. Ah. <laughs> 
So I work part-time as a nanny with an 11-year-old, and I also work on life skills with a 14-year-old who has autism. Her mother and I are very close. I help her, I attend her art meetings. I help with uh, taking her to therapy and assessing what goals we should set for her. Um, I get to work with her on the weekends on life skills like um, hygiene routines. We also get to do very fun things like going rollerblading together and McDonald's and Chick-fil-A, which I love. So good. Um, I, as I previously stated, I'm taking classes through CUNY. I'm working on my uh, master's in disability services and higher education because I want to work in higher education. I want to work with individuals that are over 18 that are making decisions for themselves for their education. I hope to continue telling my story because I'm not done yet. And I really hope to uh, have my story posted on YouTube and Instagram. My tag there is warrior of an invisible war. And I would really like to write a book because there is a lot I did not get to tell you guys. And uh, it's important to talk about everything that's happened and all the steps that it took to get me here today. The image on the screen is a picture of my mother and my father and I. This was taken my junior year at Wells. We're standing on the front porch of Henry Wells's house. I'm leaning on my dad, as I very often do, and my mother is very, very proud standing next to me, as she very, very often is. Thank you all so much. I really appreciate listening to my story.